Let's read the name of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. I greet all the brethren with the, in the church, those who follow us with the peace of the Lord. Amen. Luke 12, Luke 12, 36. Luke 12, 36, verse 36. Amen. Let's see if it works now. Sorry. Let your ways be judged, and your lamps burning, and yourselves be like men. Wait for the master. When he returns from the wedding, and when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you, that he will gird himself and have them sit down and eat, and will come and serve them. And if he should But know this, if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watch and not allow his House to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of the Man coming in your hour. Do not expect. Please be seated. Brother, the Word of God, it's very clear, very objective for those who who are connected in the body through the Holy Spirit. For those who don't discern what is spiritual, the word is becomes becomes empty. Jesus now that at this moment he was directing directing this word Jesus was, was was directing the, these words to the church, to disciples, not to the world, not to those who are disconnected from to the eternity. Interesting that the church of God, the faithful church, it has its tragic tra trajectory. It has its destiny. us that once received the call from the Lord and us for choosing to serve the Lord we were presented to the faithful church the faithful church didn't start at Villa Valle in Victoria Espiritu Santo the faithful church started inside of the project of the Father. The beginning of the church was 2,000 years ago. After the death of Jesus, this church, we are connected. We are connected to the Father through the Holy Spirit. Not because we're not a member of a Maranatha church or because you give your dism, or because you come here every weekend or because you 
come to the church once in a time. We are connected to the church through the faith, and the Holy Spirit is what makes us connected to the God. The primitive church started in a way. We are, we are privileged to be coming to the end of this way. The word shows that. That's why Jesus says, That's what Jesus says. Please be. It's for the, it's for the church. It's for us, servants of the Lord, to be alert. And we are almost at the end of this wait, which is the return of Jesus. It is the moment where the church will be taken from this world. When the Bible says at the end of the times, he's not talking about the end of the world. That's going to be a destruction. Of apocalypse. Mm. It's nothing like that. It's Hollywood movie. No, it's not going to be anything like that. When the Bible says the end of times, it's the times of churches. The times that where the churches will, will go out of this world, this earth, with the Holy Spirit. So the faithful church will be taken. The the end of the times for the church, not for the man, not for the world. The Bible shows us that. This Jesus says, says this parable directly to the servant. And we can affirm something right here in the pulpit. We can affirm that that the prophecies, all of them, will be will be fulfilled. All the prophecies pre-rapture have been fulfilled. We are only waiting for one. And everything that you've seen, that you uh, that you have read, and acts, uh, the operational of the Holy Spirit, the salvation of lives, the miracles, the resurrection of lives, cures, everything we see there today nowadays. Some of, some of them here in the church, some of them in different churches and around the world. Why? Because the same operation of the Holy Spirit that started back then when Jesus, when Jesus was accepted in heaven, it still stills operating today. It's, it's still among us. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the one that governs the church. And now, Jesus says, clearly says. Why? Because Jesus does not want the church to lose the focus. It's not, a, it's not objective of the God to complicate things. It's not his wish that the man loses himself. But he wants that the, he wants the true adorers serve them. In, in in spirit and in truth. All the men will serve me. What's the problem? God has power for that. That's not what He expects. He expects that the gratitude for the for what He does for us, for what He did for us, we can serve Him. We serve Him for gratitude. He wants you to come to His presence to glorify Him. He wants you to be in communion with him for gratitude for everything that he's been doing in your life, in the, in the life of your family, in the life of the church. So God expects us to be in communion with him because we want, not because we're obligated. Not because you're obligated, otherwise you're going to die. We have the freedom to choose the condition he, he has given us the condition to auto judge to auto conduct ourselves and now Jesus talks about this parable for the church to stay in a way to remain in a way to, 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 to not give up 
to not that doesn't lose the focus. Be misbegirded. Yeah. It's a moment of preparation. A moment that you have to be ready for something to happen. Yes or no? Yes. In the Air Force, there is a there are soldiers there are in the gardens. All night as a guard, they sleep over. They're ready. They're ready because at any moment there's com there could be an enemy coming, an airplane on a on a sp on a space. Yeah, he he can, has to go and come back. They be ready. They have to be ready. Yes, it's good. It. Talks about that when the church needs to be ready. It's a moment of a. It's not a moment for us to be without a, a compromise with the word of the Lord, with our call. The moment is its attention. In Egypt, in Egypt, in Egypt, when the Lord, when the Lord took the people from the Egypt from the hands of Pharaoh. And the last day, he says, Moses, tell the people to be ready for the Easter. We're going to do this, this, and that. The lamb has to be that, has to be in the fire. But, but when they, they have to be, when they get ready to eat it, they had to have waist be girded, shoes on hand, and And the staff on the hands, because because they had to use they had to wear it. they had to wear some it's like a belt it's, it's like a belt waist be good it's like a belt because when you use that belt the it's like a leather a leather belt so you can be straight so you wouldn't force wouldn't force your back your muscles in the back why when they took those heavy stones when they were going down to make any movement it wouldn't hurt their back the muscles in the back and so they use those those waist belt to be in the right position always when they move around and when they arrived home, imagine the slaves working. When they arrived home, they all, when they wanted, when they got home, all they, all they wanted to do is throw stuff away and just rest. Take the shoes, take the, take the belt. It's so taking the belt off. It's it's a sign of rest. I'm home. I'm gonna rest now. So he wants to take shoes, belts, everything to relax. So Jesus said, Moses, tell them, tell them not to take the, the ways be guarded so they can continue because they didn't have time for anything else. They had to obey the revelation that, that was that. Because at any moment, the angel was going to pass by. And when the angel passed by, they, they would have to, to follow exactly what the Jesus said eating the lamp, glorifying the Lord in a feast at home. They couldn't be, a, they couldn't be, a, not, they could not be unprepared. That's why Jesus says, let your waist be girded. Because the church of the last hour, the church that we are part of, we are connected to it through the Holy Spirit, the faithful church. At this moment, there's no moment to an easy gospel. There's no, there's no, there's no moment for, you know, a halfway done gospel. Today I'm here. Tomorrow I'm uh, somewhere else. I'm young. I have the right. I go here. I go there. I'm gonna have fun. The 
people think that. There's no moment for that now. The moment now is the alert, to be alert. The moment where Jesus, Jesus can come back at any moment. You don't want to be caught unprepared. Longs. We speak God it is the is the truth. Because the for you to leave the gospel the genuine gospel you have to be covered with the truth. It's difficult to to carry the truth. It's heavy. To walk on the truth is not easy. To carry the gospel at any way, it's not easy to do it when you want it, whenever you want it. I go to this service whenever I want. To today is, is the time to stay home. There's no more time for that. Today, the servant of the Lord, the faithful church, you know how it's seen? You know how is it seen? It's detected by God, but by, but always, but for everyone. So it's when the servant is carrying the truth, it's living the truth, when it's living the gospel, according to the way Lord left it to us, and the hundred year of the church, the enemy was able to make a mess and the faithful church. He was able to put on the mind of the servant right there in the beginning that that everything could be could be done. That they could do anything they want. We could be with one foot in the church, one foot in the world. Everything was possible. You know what God did? To show to show who was good and who was not good. He allowed the church to be taken to the to the crosses, to the to the darkness. Because those who had to preach the truth, they were going to be identified. The only thing that Rome wanted is that now you're going to be public, publicly deny Jesus, deny that this Jesus is, is alive, and that you're going to, and that you're going to serve Caesar. That was the proof. That was the proof of uh, the moment of where the church is. That's where the church showed that they had the waste. Get it because they did not curve to the opposition they did not curve to the to the the sins but they died with the lord in their hearts they died announcing that jesus was a savior that jesus was alive that jesus resurrected on the third day that was the truth that they had to announce today that we have to announce you know that today Today, the truth that we announce is that Jesus is coming back. Jesus will come back. The primitive church is that Jesus was alive in my heart. Now, the church of the last day is Jesus is coming back. Jesus, Jesus will return. Prepare your life. Prepare your soul. That was the truth. It's difficult to carry that. It's difficult to testify in the power of the Lord. But uh, in the moments like that, that the faithful church is differently, different from others. In the moments of like this, a trials where because the faithful servant would never deny Jesus. He will never curb himself for the things of this world. Those are moments of proof, moments of trial that God allows you to go through because of moments like that that we are that we say, Lord, this is what you want. 
It's not going to be a glass of, of, of beer, you know, addictions, night outs, a moment of pleasure that's going to take my salvation to the Lord. I'm not going to curve because my lamb is not, because my life is marked with the blood of Jesus, because Jesus paid a high price for my life. It's difficult to do this. It's difficult to do that. It's very difficult to do this. It's not easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it because a moment like this, that Jesus placed himself standing up and says, next to the Father, says, I die for him. I die for them. Jo was also proved like that. Jo was proved like that because the server is proved. He had he servants were proven when the fire because of moments like that that they showed to the Lord and to the world who he truly is. But tonight gives us this alert. There's still time. There's still time. Who knows your family is is away from the Lord? Who knows you are a little bit away from the Lord? Who knows you have lived moments more spiritual moments with the Lord? Maybe today the Lord is called, but it's still time because Jesus has not returned yet. So you, this message is this message is to alert us that truly that you can that, that you can have your ways to be guarded, guarded. And, and and there were some belts that were bigger than others. But but when you are when you do on your on your ways, you need it's a body, it's the church, it's one alerting another one. Sometimes the pastor calls you, a young person or a worker, to talk. Hey, sister, brethren, don't do this, don't do that. It's, it's the necessity. It's, it's the ways to, it's the ways to be good. It has to firm, to be firm, because the, the more firm that you are, the less you're gonna curve to the word that it's giving you. A lot of times, the pastors are, m a bad, uh, misinterpreted. The church is misinterpreted. Sometimes the, ch the family does not accept this, but a moment like this, that you are telling all that I want Jesus. I want Jesus. And the truth is difficult. It's not easy. It's for you to be a good father, to be a good husband, to be a boss, to be a good employee, it's not easy. Sometimes it's difficult. It's very difficult sometimes, but it's worth it. The truth has to be taken. The truth is direct. The, the lie is easier. It's easier to, to lie, to blame somebody, it's it's easy to blame someone like Adam was blamed, you know, he ate the fruit. Eve, what happened? It's easy to lie. It's easy to. But the truth, no, the truth is direct. And the person has to be in the spirit. David, you had sinned. Why? Because the heart of David, because it was like the heart of God. The heart of uh, David pleased the Jesus, pleased the Lord. And Jesus said, "Let the ways be girded." Any lamps burning. The kids know well 
the lamps, the little lamps, small lamps that you put oil. There was a fire. A little lamp of the week. So you can show the kids. And it had to be, it had to be on the oil. It talks about the Holy Spirit. The lamp talks about your heart. So the man today, the faithful church, needs the control of the Holy Spirit. You have to be you have to be covered with the oil, involved with the Holy Spirit. The church, it's involved, involved with the salvation of the Jesus. We have to call it. The church is, the church keeps the salvation because it keeps Jesus in our heart. And the lamp, and the burning lamp is that. It's us to be ready. It's us being ready with the blessing of the Holy Spirit all the time, not only here at the church, but at your house, to be testimony of the power of the Lord. Here at the church is easy to, to put a jacket and come here. It's easy. But out there, the, the lamp has to be shown out there, out there, which is the darkness. It's where it's dark. It's where the word is the gov under the government of the enemy. It's out there where the church needs to show who it is, who you, who you belong to. And yourselves be like the men who wait for the master to be to be similar, to be equal, to be compatible, to be to show something similar with the same character aspect. We are this. We are similar to the God. The church needs to be all the time waiting for the return of Jesus, as if it was going to happen now. That's why the instruction of Jesus, this alert of Jesus, why? Because we can't let the things happen at the last minute. Imagine, just like the sisters, when they have to prepare for a wedding, for a party, what time do they start to, to get ready? What time do they start to get ready? The, me, the weddings at 8 o'clock, they start to get ready like before lunch. <laughs> they, <laughs> they start preparing themselves hours before that. Yes. Yeah. That's the preparation similar to that, that the church is waiting for us. We can never come to the time. Lord, wait 30 seconds because I'm going to do this. No. Not when Jesus says, son, come come get the church. That's that's it. It's going to be in an open and close of an eye. In an open and close of an eye. In a blink of an eye. That's why, brethren, we need to be ready. Because we don't know the hour that the thief will come. We don't know what time the thief is going to come to your door. Sometimes he doesn't even knock it. Knock for what? He goes right in. He breaks into it. That's what the thief does. Does not give you any, any signal. The Lord, we need to be prepared. And here, let your ways be good. Any lamps burning. And it talks in the plural. But you know that the waste and, and lamps are all the same. You have a good, and I have my lamp. You have to have yours, and I have to have mine. Why? Because the attention has to be ours. We cannot, we can never let the 
father sees that the pastor, that the brethren, that the God that did not give me the peace of Lord, that we cannot let. It's your responsibility with the Lord. The salvation is individual, but it's living the body. That's why the Lord said, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. Because the church is going to be taken. For you to be taken with the church, you have to be ready. You have to have your waist girded and your lamps burning. Because the church is going to come to the Lord. Israel left Egypt. And from thousand that left, how many arrived? Arrived. How many that arrived left together and arrived? Only two. But they arrived. Two. But those who were born in those 40 years, but the Church of Israel arrived, left Egypt, and arrived at Kenya. Our, our trial is for us to remain. Many are called, and little are chosen. You have been called. You are part of it. Ah, you don't. You cannot say that Jesus will not return. You have heard that. You are part of those that will be, that many will be called. Now our trial is that we have to choose. The, the, door, the door is tight. The world is large, and it's, but the door is straight. It's a funnel. Our fight is for us to remain with Jesus. And that's why the orientation of Jesus is to let your ways be girded. Don't let your lamps You know what is to wait for the Lord? You know what's to wait for the Lord? It's when you say no to the sins. It's when you fight for your family. It's when you fight for your salvation. It's when you pray for the new converted. It's when you 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 want in the return of Jesus and say, Lord, I want this. Above all in this world, I want the salvation of the Lord. It's in the heaven where I want to live. It's in the heaven where I want to live with Jesus where I want to meet. Rather than this word, this word could be an alert for you if you are living without any attention to this of what God has to you for your life. Today is the moment. Today is the day for you to put in order your house. To do is the, way, the day that, Lord, don't let me waste my time with it. I want that the Holy Spirit can speak to your heart, that the Holy Spirit can see your life today. You will have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that He can renew the joy of the baptism that you receive from the Holy Spirit. If the first love of your life is weak, that the Lord can renew it today. Your, your desire that, that can be confirmed today with the glory.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. Let's stand up, please. two gifts and there's two gifts the Lord gave us two gifts and these two gifts the Lord spoke about about two families. They are going through difficult moments. One of them because because they they forgot the forgot to compromise with the Lord. They forgot the word. They forgot what they have lived. They forgot the blessings they received. The and they are they're down they're weak with the with the faith and the other the other family same thing with the lord which is the mother she's praying crying finding for the for the lord to to save his family brethren sometimes we don't know what you're going through your trial your your pain, but but this faithful server never denies the Lord, and the God and God knows that. And if you're going through the trials now and being proved by the Lord, with your family in your spiritual area, professional area, if you're being under proof with the, it's because the Lord is allowing this and if you uh, if you remain with your ways to get it the Lord will honor you <coughs> now put put this in your heart pray to the Lord never give up don't give up your family needs a blessing but but the word of God has to be kept in your heart it's not it's not placed on the table, on a, on a picture, no. The Word of God has to be in our heart. Because it's here. Because when it's here, 
is where we're going to put in practice in our lives. In the mind, it's kind of confused, but in the heart, no. In the heart, is the feeling. In the heart is where you're going to demonstrate to the Lord that what you uh, feel for him, what the, because the church is doing, no. It's nothing to do with what church does. It's, that's not going to take you to heaven. You have to have your lamp. You have to have your waist girded. Your definition, your position, your posture has to be similar to a servant of the Lord. Amen? Let's, uh, let's pray. Let's have a glorification. And dear Lord, we adore you for those beautiful, wonderful words. For this wonderful word that, that had fulfilled us with joy. We pray, Lord, because you never abandon us. We adore you, Lord. Because close is the great day. And we know and we believe. And there's no condemn, condemnation for those who are in Christ. Because we have this great hope. We pray, Lord, for everything Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glorificamos, Senhor, o teu nome por mais uma noite estarmos na tua presença. Por mais uma semana, Senhor, que começa. Nós sabemos que queremos chegar no final, Senhor. We know that we're going to come at the end, Lord, with the victory in our hands. We know that the faithful church will go, will prosper. It's going to go from this world. And our prayer tonight is that we we are included and now that our names are written in the book of life, that nothing that can steal our bless, nothing in this world can take away our definition, our focus in you, Lord. Receive our glorification, Lord, and that you are uh, going to revert this in blessings to all your church. For those, uh, even for those that are not here tonight, that are watching us via Zoom and YouTube, that you can reach us, them, reach them also, Lord, and renew them, and that together that we can have in our heart and our lips a praise to you, Lord. Receive our glorification and step praise we do in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say that the grace, wonderful grace of our Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit are pour upon you for now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. If you identify yourself with a gift, if you need a pray, we are here available. The deacons, the workers, the brethren and the Zoom, if you need assistance, please, the brethren will be praying for you. To all the peace of the Lord.